Hey everybody, this is a practice internal for the Graphs Level 2 Calculus Standard, and this one's all about a timber trail. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the question, have a pause and a read. But basically, this video, we're going to chat about section or task number one, which is the Achieved and Merit stuff. And later on in a separate video, I'm then going to do a another one that goes through everything from start to finish at a different excellence level um, and I guess the key thing to note is the approach you're taking if you're aiming for achieved and merit is very different to the approach that you need to take if you're aiming for excellence so let's get rid of that E stuff so in our next slide we've got the trail you can see the dotted line you can kind of see it roughly follows kind of this shape so for achieved and merit all you need to do at a bare minimum is you need to come up with two sections of this trail but these sections you need to use different graphs so you can't use two parabolas you can use an exponential and a parabola but you can't use two of the same so what I'm going to do is I'm roughly going to look across the graph which ones I know for sure are easy so this section here this could be one of many graphs and it looks a bit annoying because of all the gaps here so I'm not actually going to stress about this se section here the section I actually like the most is, do you see how you kind of here and here, we've got some maximums? What I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that's a maximum and that's a maximum. And I'm going to make a trig graph, a cosine graph in particular, as a result. Um, so to start off with, by doing that, I've got the maximums. I know the in between, in the bang in the middle, there's going to be a minimum on the other side. And I'm putting it roughly on the bottom of that trail. And by connecting the dots, kind of a little bit like this, I can make a cosine section for when x is between 5 to 7. So you can see 5 to 7. So there's a lot going on on the screen, so I'm just going to delete a little bit of that now. So the second part of my project... I'm going to need to do the same thing, but for another section. So you can see down the bottom here, that looks like a really nice parabola. So what I'm going to do is, you can see it needs to finish near the finish line over there. And the opposite point would roughly be there, which is a nice number next to 8. And in the middle, there would have been a vertex. So by connecting these dots here, we can make a really nice parabola that's super, super close to that section of the graph. And just noting, I've got my two sections, so this stuff over here that I've missed, don't need to worry about that. And I also don't need to worry about this middle section. So let's call this section here, section 1. And just a reminder, that has a domain for values between 5 and 7. Oh, that should be a squiggly bracket. And this section over here, we're going to call section 2. And they are going to have values or a domain between 8 and 10. So that's the first step of my internal. I'm just going to figure out what nice two graphs do I want to create. I'm good. And then now I've planned the section. Following this, we can now actually get into the discussion of each section and the plan for each section. So let's start off with my discussion. So um, as always, I'm going to do a heading, section 1. And my starting point, this is the merit criteria. I'm going to start by discussing the key parts of my graph, and I need to link it to the trail. So this was all about a drone and its flight path. So um, the first section of my drone's flight path has a domain of, and I'm just going to list the domain, so that's 5 all the way up to 7. So that's my first feature, so that's probably the most important feature, because um, I'm just limiting to it. Now I want to get, you know, why is this a trig graph? So I guess the first thing to note, this section of the timber trail does look a bit like a wave, and that's what a trig graph looks like. So this section... of the timber trail 
looks like a, a wave. Which means a trigonometry graph And I'll be specific in this case, um, a cosine graph. Would model the section well. Okay, so that there, so you can see I'm using phrases like timber trail, I'm using phrases like the drone's flight path. I'm thinking of the context of the scenario and I'm linking it to the features of my graph and that there was the domain and the fact it looks a little bit like a wave. Um, the probably the other important features I want to mention before I do um, probably going to be those maximums because trigonometry graphs always have those turning points so I probably want to mention those before I do the rest of my analysis. Um, the section or the or Maybe I'll we'll link it to context a bit more. So this section of the timber trail has two maximums or two maximums at, and I'm going to state the coordinates because these are really, really important for cosine graphs. So that's comma or oh, five comma zero and seven comma zero. And then the final thing is, because it needs to have a minimum as well, um, I'm going to mention that minimum down there. Um, in between these is a minimum at, uh, what point's that? So that's 6, negative 2. So that there is kind of the merit discussion that you need to have. So merit, that is the features, forgive my missing handwriting, linked to the context. So it's a bit weird, we're actually starting with the merit stuff. Following this, we're gonna move on to the achieve stuff or the achieve discussion. Um, and that's really just a list of other relevant sections. So other relevant features, And this is when we get a bit more specific thinking about a trig line. So something really important for a trig graph is the center line. So we've got a center line at y equals negative 1. The period of a trig graph is really important, how long it takes to complete a full um, cycle. So we've got a period of two units by the looks of it. So we've got a period of two units. Um, the amplitude, kind of where it is from the center line to the maximum, that's also a really important part of the trigonometry graph. So we've got an amplitude of one unit. And the last thing to note is the first maximum, that should have been the y-intercept over there. So that's been shift over. So we can talk about the horizontal shift at here. And we've kind of already mentioned with the center line, we've already mentioned the vertical shift there as well. So we've got a horizontal shift to the left or to the right of five units. So horizontal shift. Um, oh, I'll make it a bit better to the right. by five units. There we go, so that wraps up. So this stuff here, this is your achieve part. These are your other features. So the last thing to note is if you're not aiming for merit, if you're only aiming for achieved, you know, stuff like the domain, you can just dump that in your list here. The fact it looks like a wave, you can dump that in your list. The maximums, that should be on your list and the minimum should also be on your list. So you can skip that whole paragraph if you're only aiming for achieved and you could just put it on that list instead. So the final step after this, as I delete all these annoying arrows, is doing the maths part of it. 
in your answer, it'll be a bit more logical because you'll be doing it on a page going downwards. Um, but let's just write my generic formula up the top here. So we've got y is equal to a cos, and then we've got b brackets x minus c plus d. So a is for amplitude, and we already know on our list that the amplitude was equal to 1. So we've got a is equal to 1. b, don't forget b is... If you remember 360 divided by n, n being the period, and we know that's 2. So that's going to be 360 over 2, which is equal to 180. C relates to your horizontal shift. Rs is positive 5, which means C is going to be, I should, I should write plus 5 there actually. So C is going to be negative 5. And then D is your vertical shift. That was the center line of negative 1. So based on all of that, we can now put together our equation. So therefore, we've got y is equal to cos, because we can ignore that neg that positive 1. And then we've got 180. Um, what we've got x minus 5. And then we've got minus 1. Forgive me as I've leaned on the button. There we go, plus 1. And finally, we finish up with our domain. That is for values of x between 5 and 7. So that wraps up one of the achieved sections or one of the merit sections that you need to do. So we are now looking at the second section of our graph. Forgive me as I just get the pen organized. So as always, let's start off with the heading, section two. And we're going to follow a similar format because we're aiming for merit in this video. We're going to start off with a paragraph that links the key features to the context. We're then going to have a bullet point list of anything else worth mentioning. And then following that, we get the actual equation of that uh, with the domain. So let's get into that here. So again, we need to think context. So we can see um, this is only relevant for the trail between 8 and 10. So we probably need to start by mentioning that. So this section of the drones flight path um, has a domain of and then we got in this case 8 to 10. So that's my first section and if we scroll back to the previous one you'll see that matches exactly what I've done. So this one will be a bit quicker because there's less thinking to do because I've already done my first answer. So I'm just going to mimic it for my, my next section. So oh, if you go back, the section then looks at the key features. And in this case, the key features of a parabola um, is the symmetry that we see down the middle and also the vertex. So I need to mention symmetry and vertex. So if we start off with symmetry, we can see this section um, through the line x equals 9. It is pretty symmetrical from left to right. Um, so we're just going to mention that. So this section of the timber trail and again I'm using context drones flight timber trial or trail um, just to make sure I'm getting that merit level appears to be symmetrical to be symmetrical through y or x equals 9. There you go. So symmetry was one of the more important parts of a parabola. The other really important part of a parabola is the vertex. So I need to emphasize that vertex as well. Um, all the other key points will end up on that list. So the section also appears to have a vertex. The section also appears to have a vertex at forgive my messy handwriting so what's that eight comma negative four actually it's nine isn't it nine four that matches the line of symmetry there you go so i think this case um a less chatty but this merit stuff as i mentioned in the previous section we are linking the key features with the context of the scenario. So following that, the achieve part, we're just going to list all the other features that are relevant.
So other relevant features. And some of these are obvious, um, but we can't see any y-intercepts and we can't see any x-intercepts. And that's important because with a parabola, you could use an x-intercept method or a vertex method. Because you can't see the x-intercepts, it means you're going to be using the vertex method instead. So there are no visible x and y intercepts. Uh, we could probably mention the range. The range is going from negative 3 to negative 4. Range from having a bad spelling day in the morning. From, so we've got negative 4, y, 3. And I'm really only mentioning that because I don't have too many other things to mention here. I could probably mention this. the other clear points I can see. I can see a start and an end point um, along the line of negative 3. So let's mention that so we can see a start point at, uh, what was that, 8, comma, negative 3, and we can see that end point at, um, so that's 10, comma, negative 3. So we've got... Uh, achieve section done now. So this is the achieve stuff. This is the other features that you haven't mentioned. We can now get into the math part of it. So we're using the vertex formula for a parabola. So there it is. And I can see my vertex down here. It should have been at the origin. So we can see it's been moved across by 9. And then it's been moved down by 4. So based on that, my B value will be negative 9, and my C value will be negative 4. I've written positive 4, but that should be negative 4. So let's plug that in for B and C over here. So we know that Y will be equal to A, X minus 9 squared minus 4. So following this, we now need to calculate A. So remember, A means you've got to use algebra to solve it. Um, and parabolas anyway. So we're going to look to find an x and a y value. And we're going to use one of the start and end points to help us out. Um, I'm going to pick the end point of 10, negative 3 to use it, just because 10 is an easy number to do math with. Probably less likely to do a math error in that case. So from that, we know that x is equal to 10, and we know that y is equal to negative 3. So negative 3 is equal to a... 10 minus 9 squared minus 4. So that's my substitution. And then I'm going to have plus 4 on both sides. So that means 1 will be equal to a because 1 squared is still 1, which means we've got 1a. So after all of that, we've got our equation. Therefore, y is equal to x minus 9 squared minus 4. And I've got a domain. Don't forget your domain for these between 8 and and 10. So this wraps up the merit video. You can see at this point, even with my extra chit chats, it's taken us about 18 minutes to do all the merit stuff. This is a bare minimum, by the way. Hopefully you can do a third section in the real internal. But just a reminder, for merit, you need a paragraph that links the key features to the context. After that, you need to list all of the other relevant features for the model that you're picking. We're picking a parabola. And then finally, you need to do the math and get the equation. So that wraps up this Achieve Merit video for the Graphs Timber Trail timber trial Internal. Keep me saying that wrong. Hopefully you found it really, really useful. If you've got any questions, hit me up in class, put it in the comments below, whatever you need to.